I'm William Richards, photographer, and this is The Lookbook. I'm a portrait photographer. For the last 25 years or so, I've been focused mostly on entertainment and music industry, both here in Jamaica and in the United States, where I was originally based, New York City. I like to think of myself as uh, one of the most prolific journalists of the dance hall movement. I haven't been in it since the beginning, but since I've been doing it, I've been doing it like nobody else has. I owe a lot to dance hall music and the Jamaican culture, and I try and put a lot back into it. Wow. Okay, well, we have two portraits of myself shot about 15 years apart. The one on my left was shot by a former student and assistant and a very good friend of mine, a Jamaican photographer by the name of Marlon James, not to be mistaken with Marlon James, the author. I particularly like it because the thing that it says to me personally most is that it shows my love of the old school photography to use an old 4x5 view camera, as basic a camera you can have almost on a certain level, but at the same time, it's one of the most technical cameras in terms of operation. It's very, very high tech, but for it's very old school high tech. I, I love the, the pose. Because there's no face showing, I had a very exaggerated pose, which makes it seem like there's a lot of energy in the picture. The portrait on the right, <laughs> was shot by a young photographer quite recently, um, about mm, maybe two years ago or less. And I should remember her name. She is a wonderful young lady. She works at the Kingston Creative Office downtown. It's, I, I just, I love, I love them both. I love both, both pictures. I'm very flattered that you open this segment with showing photography of the photographer. Nice, very flattering approach. Thank you for that. Nice. I like that you chose this next. I, I love your selection so far. Amazing Beanie Man. The right is an image that we actually used for the Blessed album cover. And um, it's not the actual co cover shot, but it's one, It's from that same shoot. And we're downtown in downtown Kingston, where we shot some beautiful photographs. And what is so important to me about this shoot was the Blessed album cover was the first cover that I shot, which I loved the picture that they chose for the cover. Usually the artist picks something, the photographer picks something, and the label picks something else. And it very rarely happens that the picture that I love is chosen by both the artist and the record label. In this case, I guess because there were so many great pictures, it was really hard to miss, but I love that album cover, bless it. On the left side um, was a portrait from Beanie Man's Tell Me What You Want photo shoot. And that was a single with Angie Martinez on VP Records and a pretty epic, iconic moment. The pictures still resonate today. And I um, have a very close relationship with Beanie Man and his whole crew still. I, I just shot a recent um, shoot with Beanie. I don't know, there, there was a certain energy because dancehall music was, was bubbling. Like for the first time, it was really getting out there internationally. Like Shabba kind of set the, the trend, but then artists like Patra and Beanie Man. And at the time, Bujo, it wasn't really Sean Paul yet. Shaggy was really bubbling then. Hip hop had embraced dance hall music and it was really being out there. I was a young photographer kind of jetting between New York and Kingston all the time. It was it was fun, fun times. Moving on. Oh, nice. We just mentioned Patra. Um, Patra was on Sony at a uh, label called Epic and Shaba and Patra were on Epic record label. And this was the cover for The Scent of Attraction. And this is an example of what I'm talking about. The image that you've chosen is the one I love, which is on my website. The image that they chose was an image I didn't like, and they chose it to paint red lips on a black and white image. And they thought it was, I don't know what they thought it was. I thought it was extremely tacky. Even for the 90s, it was really a strange choice. For a young photographer, it was kind of <sighs> the bittersweet end result of all that work and preparation. And then in the end, you realize that you really were just a little cog in a machine that the record label had all to say and no matter what you liked, it wasn't really about what you liked, it was what the record label said was going to be on the cover. And as a young photographer coming up, you, you see these covers and you think, you know, you're going to get a chance to be directing and, you know, and again, you know, you're contributing, but, you know, it was, that was one of the first lessons I learned that what you want doesn't necessarily the way, it, isn't necessarily the way it goes. And, 
It's a good lesson to learn early. <laughs> Humbling. On the right is the great Sean Paul, and I, I can say without reservation or hesitation, the great Sean Paul. Sean Paul's doing numbers that Bob Marley and Shaggy have only done in Jamaican history. The numbers speak for it, and he's been consistently relevant for 20 years now. I shot with him a couple months ago. Sean Paul here shot at the great Tough Gong studio on Marcus Garvey Drive. This is a shoot that was done for his management. At the time it was Jeremy Harding, Too Hard Management. I'd already shot a couple of covers for him. They approached me, they said they wanted some new publicity pictures and create a direct a shoot and design a shoot for them. And it, it was no label involved, it was just me, Sean and management. And <laughs> of course, you know, that changed the whole game and it was a really lovely shoot. Of, some very iconic images that have you know, gone around the world again and again, again and again. It's been such a fantastic ride. The loyalty of my clients has turned many of them into friends. And that's fantastic. I love to see that. And again, <laughs> ah, you show one of my favorite power couples here in dance hall. Ah, oh, boy, memory lane, bro. Look, fuck, indeed. Tammy Chin shot for Universal Records. This is a shoot, I would say it was 10 years ago. Maybe a little bit more. We kicked ass, man. <laughs> I was based in New York at the time. Flew down this pretty dope ass crew. And we spent two days prepping and scouting and two days shooting. It was a fantastic job. This was interesting. The great Simone Clark had created this um, set for a music video that included a, a helicopter pad. And we inverted the helicopter pad and put it against a wall and then made a set that led to it instead of shooting down on it. And it, she didn't like the idea of it, but it looked so dope. <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. I'm so glad we did it. Very old school, man. No retouching, no, just, just great set design and great planning. It was right when she got her, her Universal deal. So it was her first album for Universal Records. And so it was quite a while back. Nice memories. Uh, of course, she went on to marry Wayne Marshall. And again, Wayne is my friend, man. I remember this day very, very, very clearly. The full picture uncropped shows a beautiful sunset, like a surreal. I was just so happy that I got to share that moment with my boy Wayne. and. Beautiful portrait. I've gone on to shoot them several times since for different magazines, different ad campaigns. Haha! -ha! Snoopy Dog on the, the right and Diana King <laughs> on the left. <laughs> now, Diana King was a friend of mine before she was a star, before she ever had a first hit, before she used to go around town with these rectangles painted over her eyes. She like long before chicks were painting their eyebrows like that. She was doing some weird, weird emo shit back in the day. All black, shaved head back in the day. Very interesting girl. This picture was shot at Bridget Sandals, who is like an auntie to us both. This editorial right here was for Source Magazine. We did a feature on the women of Jamaica and featuring Lady G, Diana King, Marsha Griffiths, Tanya Stevens. Okay, on the right here, we have Snoop Dogg. I gotta light up for this story. <laughs> I ended up going to Las Vegas from New York to shoot Snoop Dogg for Stuff Magazine. It was a brother magazine to Maxim. Stuff and Maxim. Maxim Magazine is a men's magazine. It was very popular in the 90s, but Stuff was the little brother to, to, to um, Maxim Magazine. It was for a slightly younger demographic, 20s as opposed to 30s and 40s. Shooting S S Snoop Dogg's launch of his clothing line in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I did the required shoot for the magazine. And then I did something which I often do. I said, Snoop, I've shot what I've done for the magazine now. I want to shoot some pictures for my own self personally, from my own archives now. Can, can we do that? And he says, sure, sure, we can do that. But I'm not doing that right now. I want to go back to the hotel and chill and hang out so we can shoot afterwards. But you're free to hang out with us in the meantime. So I was like, well, of course, Snoop, I'd love to. In fact, I've always wanted to shoot you since I saw the, the Vibe magazine cover, and I've always wanted to smoke with you, Snoop. So, hell yeah, we can hang out, we can smoke together. He said, she said, sure, church, little cuz, church, little cuz, you can go back to the crib and smoke. We're heading back to the, the, the hotel. The Bellagio is where he was staying. And we get into this huge RV, and I, I swear there was um, about 20 crips in the RV, and that was a cipher. And one was on Snoop's left, and I was on Snoop's right. Between me and Snoop was Bishop Don Juan. Now at the time, the rappers in the community, 
a lot of top rappers, especially out west, it was, it was a thing to hang out with pimps. Don Juan is a very famous pimp. He was mentoring Snoop in the game, so he was always around Snoop Dogg, but they had their little goblets. You'd, you'd often see this guy wearing green suits. He was always around Snoop Dogg. The guy would roll us the blunt and he'd pass it to Snoop. Puff, puff, pass. He'd pass it to Don, Don, Don Juan. Before he passed it to me, because I was next in the cipher, Don stuck a stiff up his nose and took a hit. And then he took a spiff. Stuck up his other nose and took a hit. And I could see the cherry burn on the red end of the spliff or the blunt before he passed it to me. So I know that thing was deep in his nose hole. <laughs> he passes it to me. <laughs> and I've been saying, oh, Snoop, Snoop, I want to smoke with you, blah, 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 blah. What am I going to do? I couldn't disrespect the cipher. So I did an old school trick. I put the spliff here. Hit it. Hit it again. I pass it to the right. But I'm looking over at Bishop and I'm pre and I'm like, yo, what's going on? Why does nigga do this stuff? He hit his nose. I might be about the spliff going around a big old cipher, so you can't just have one spliff, you have to have several spliff for it to go around this cipher. And Bishop does the same thing. He pans it to me. And I'm like, God damn. In my head, I'm wondering, is it because I'm the new guy? Are they trying to pump me out? Is this some kind of hazing? Is it because I'm a nerd? Why are they doing this? So again, I take a little booger spliff and I hit it. Now the third time they pass it to me, I say, I say, hold up, hold up. A bishop, every time they hand you that spliff, you stick it in your nose. What's going on, man? Why are you handing me the spliff that you stick in your nose? Bishop looks at me and says, Yo, little cuz, little cuz, Bishop is not just a title. I'm actually the head of my church. And when I took head of my congregation, I promised my congregation that no drugs or alcohol would touch my lips. And that is him dropping game, game, knowledge on the game. And everybody shook their head and said, church, church, because that was like some deep, deep, profound knowledge they drew. So at least in my head, I realized he wasn't taking it on me personally, that he wasn't handing me the booger spliff as some kind of hazing um, practice or anything like that. It was just his style. He always takes a spliff to his nose. So I couldn't make the shit up. And that is the story of William and Snoop Dogg and the booger spliff. After that, we hung out and we, we wanted to shoot, went on to shoot these portraits here, which is not what the magazine had asked for, but what I insisted on shooting. As a result of shooting these pictures, Snoop Dogg Clothing, which is the name of the company, his first fashion line that we were, the reason why we were in Vegas was shooting his clothing line at the Magic Convention. The portraits that I insisted on shooting afterwards, after the magazine, and remember I had specified it to him that it was, the work for the magazine was done, this was my own personal shoot. He liked these pictures so much that he went on to repurchase these pictures back from me at a tremendous profit separately from what the magazine was paying me to go to Vegas to shoot this. And they ended up using um, one of the pictures to, to wrap a building in Times Square. So I literally was walking through Times Square seeing my picture of Snoop Dogg wrapping a building. And every time I'm walking by, I have to chuckle to myself because I'm remembering the goddamn booger spliff <laughs> that, that I had to endure in order to get my shot. Anyway, memory, memory lane, bro. Memory lane. Thank you for this. It's very fun.